Hi my loves, welcome back to my channel. I'm Jessica Alexandria of Bahati Life for those of you guys that don't know. Tonight we're gonna be doing a candle jar magic ritual. I've been promising you for quite some time that I would show you how I use these magic jars, these candle magic jars, which are available in my shop, but you can make them at home if you'd like. Why I use these jars with the candles versus these candles here. And I'll explain the difference, the difference between the two of them, why I prefer these and why I would prefer this one and how I use them for different rituals and different intentions. But for the most part, we're gonna be focusing on how to work these. For those of you guys that don't know, at the time of me filming, I am entering into my solar return cycle. So moving into my solar return, which means my birthday, which is the start of a new cycle within my personal life. It's kind of like the new year. The energy totally changes. It's a total new vibration. There's total new energy that's coming in and there's new challenges, there's new growth, there's new blessings, new abundance and it's very important for me now to take this time to reflect on the cycle that I'm saying goodbye to and this new cycle, this new energy that we're that I'm walking into. So this ritual tonight, even though the lighting is a little weird, I apologize for that, but it's this is what I would be doing personally. I'm just gonna be sharing it with you guys. Most of my intention, most of my work when it comes to magic, intention, and ritual usually is at night, anywhere after 10 p.m. That's just my method. The reason why I'm using these two jars and I'm choosing to do two separate jars is because there's two different ways to work with these type of candle magic jars now again you can get them from my shop and that's all linked down below or you can create them yourself it's all a matter of what it is that you prefer the herbs that I use in each jar are not something that I'm going to be sharing anymore with the public I've learned that two years ago not to do that so they are specific for what I have experienced over time that I have seen and witnessed is successful when it comes to love, money, peace, making a bond, making a commitment, calling and communication, hexing things or removing things. And you'll see that within my shop that those are the different um, options that it is that I provide because they pretty much cover all the bases. That's all that you would ever need, at least from my experience so far here on earth. You can use it for anything, okay? So the first way that you can work with a candle magic jar is pretty simple. This ritual is more about setting and holding intention and bringing it into your life, especially if you want to attract something into your life. So we're going to be using the Love Candle Magic Jar for that. So basically what you would want to do is you would want to grab a piece of paper or grab a parchment and write down all the intentions that it is that you want to manifest, all the things that it is that you want to manifest in your life. Write them down in detail and be specific. As you're writing them down, concentrate on them, focus on them. Visualize it so it's so clear you can actually feel it within your heart as if it had already manifested, as if it's already in your life. When you're at your altar or your sacred space, this is when you call out to spirit and you ask your angels, you ask your guides, you ask your ancestors to come in to help you to manifest these things as you're writing them down. Also, in addition to that, ask them for their advice and their input. This is so important because there's some things that your ancestors and your guides can see that they want to give you or that the universe or God or the, the, the divine is going to work to give you, but you may not be able to see them because you are just coming from your perspective, from your logic, from your mindset only, your viewpoint. But spirit sees all, spirit knows all, and as you're writing, you'll start to feel inspired by certain things. You'll, you'll hear a certain um, statement or you'll be called to ask for something else, something bigger than what it was that you might have thought for yourself or something very specific and detailed. Continue to write that down and pay attention to your feelings and how it's making you feel because emotion is everything. When you're done writing your intentions, what I want you to do, especially if you're trying to attract something into your life, is fold that paper three times. Fold it three times towards you. So let's say this piece of paper holds all of my intentions that I wrote down at my altar, at my sacred space. Basically what I want to do is I want to fold it once in half towards me, another time in half towards me, and then another time in half towards me. There's power in the number three. So do you see how it's long like this? elongated basically what you want to do is then take those intentions now this is just a random paper this doesn't have my intentions on it at all I actually haven't taken the time out to set intention yet or write down my intentions it's just a piece of paper from the apothecary it actually has orders on it but basically you want to wrap it and fold it into the jar into the candle magic jar 
Now, I've done this before already, so let me show you a jar that has already holding intentions within it that has already been used for ritual. I'll be right back. All right, you guys, so these are three different jars that I've worked with for separate things. Most of these are not mine. One of them is mine, but when, I don't know if you can see this, but inside the jar is a piece of paper and pieces of paper. This one is so covered with herbs and intention and oil. They hold intentions in them, things that have already manifested, things that have already materialized in our physical world. But these jars have not been opened up since the intention has been put in there. This is something that makes that candle magic jar so important and so powerful is because once it's sealed and once it's locked, that intention is going to manifest. It's protected, it's safe, it's protected and it's safe while things manifest. It just keeps all of that intention, all of that energy held and protected in that candle magic jar as the energy around it is already pretty much manifesting itself. You can keep this somewhere safe, you can put it in your desk, you can put it under your bed, you can put it in your closet, wherever it is that you feel called to put this jar when it's done is what you should do with it and however you feel called. There are some jars that is that I have that are actually sitting in plants and they have been buried within that. I'm an earth child, so I love working with the element of earth and I love burying my intentions, these jars, in plants. And you guys know I have plants all throughout my apartment, but I love burying these jars in the plants and allowing them to, to root, allow them to be held and protected by earth energy while things are manifesting in my life. They sit there completely undis undisturbed. They sit there totally sacred, totally beautiful too. I'll have like one of these behind my desk, you know, while I'm working. Intentions that I've set for my business, for myself as a boss, for myself as a business owner, that I I keep and I would like to be able to see it or I would like to keep it behind me or in my workspace. And most people don't ever come across them for the most part, especially if they're buried or especially if they're tucked, hidden away. One of these jars is was actually for a friend and they called out for $100,000 actually. And then within two to three weeks, it legit $100,000 came into their life. So if you think that these jars aren't powerful, you are sadly mistaken. But anyways, let me go back to showing you how to work this candle magic jar for yourself. Okay. So let's pretend like there is a piece of paper that has your intentions wrapped around it within the jar, right? The next thing you wanna do is to use the candle that comes with the candle magic jar. Now there are specific candles that I like to work with and these are the ones that I offer, of course, because they're my preference. But pretty much what you wanna do is bathe this candle in a combination of charged Florida water. This is something that I do, this is my ritual, so everybody does things differently. But what you wanna do is bathe the candle in a charged water or you can use an Epsom soft Epsom salt bath. And what this is doing is it's blessing the candle and cleansing the candle and prepping it for your ritual. Some people like to carve in their intention in the side of the candle. Sometimes I do that, sometimes I don't. Let's say there is a specific intention that you can see yourself manifesting. So let's say it's a specific person. You can put down their birthday, like their birth month, birthday, birth year, and your birthday, your birth month, your birth year, and carve it into the side of the candle or maybe carve their initials in the side of the candle. Then you want to use uh, intention oil or ritual oil. Of course, we're doing a love spell in this case or love intention in this case. So I'm working with my love spell. You can't see the label on there, but it is definitely my love spell. I've created myself and these oils are available in my shop too if you would like to um, have access to that yourself. I use this all the time. And basically what you do is you anoint the candle with the oil and you take it from, especially if you're trying to attract something, you take it from the tip and pull the oil up the base of the candle. And I would do this three times. Then you take the candle magic jar and you push the candle into the center of the jar. And this is one way to work these candle magic jars. I'll show you my second favorite way that you can use for divination and other ways to manifest 
some an intention into your life but the reason why you want to push the candle into the jar is because all of these herbs that are inside of the jar they hold a special proper property they hold their own special magic and as the intention is starting to really be activated it's like almost like alchemy it's taking the thought of the intention it's taking the elements it's taking the intent behind it the energy behind it working with spirit working with your guides working with your internal compass as that energy is burning and being activated all of that energy is being held within this candle jar and all of that energy is surrounding the candle and that jar now basically what you want to do is focus on the flame as you're watching the candle burn down that's one of the reasons why I love these candles is that they don't rush through the process but they don't take so long that you'd be sitting there for days it's very important that you watch how the candle flame moves and what the candle flame does because it's going to show you how that intention is going to manifest. It's going to show you the energy of the vibes around your intention or around the person that it is that you're wishing to attract or the energy within yourself, especially if you're doing a love magic candle for yourself in order to attract and pull in self-love for yourself or to attract beauty or to attract glamour or to attract good vibes and positive feelings, those types of things, which you can very well use this candle for and I have in the past. Now, I have another video on my YouTube channel that I'll link down below that talks in detail about the candle flame and watching the candle flame. I've actually gotten a, a little bit of hate for how long that video is, but you guys know that I'm pretty thorough in helping you to understand why I do what it is that I do and why you should do it. So if you want a guide in watching the candle flame, then go ahead and check that video out next. It's gonna be linked down below. But as this candle is burning down, you're focusing again on your intention. You're putting out prayers. You're thanking the universe or the divine or your ancestors or your guides for helping to manifest this blessing, whatever that blessing is in your life. You're visualizing it. You're feeling it again. You're reconnecting back to the feeling of you know what that would be like when it actually manifests within your life because it will. As you're connecting with your intention and feeling your feelings, watch the candle flame again as it burns down. Now you don't have to sit there for the entirety of the candle burning down. In fact, there's many times where I've walked around the apothecary. So I'm saying the apothecary because my altar is in my apothecary space. And this is where I do most of my magic and my intentions for myself, for my friends, my family, and, and you guys, my clients. But you don't have to sit and watch the flame the entire time. But make sure that you are watching it. Number one, it's a hazard to leave any candle flame burning. But number two, you're going to learn a lot about the energy around what it is that you're trying to manifest by watching the candle and observing the smoke, if there is any smoke, and watching the candle, how it burns down. Roughly within an hour or two or three, depending on how long it takes your candle to burn and the time that it takes, the amount of hours that it takes for the candle to burn is really significant as well. But by the time the candle gets to the top of the herbs and burns the herbs just a little bit, that's when you take the lid that's at the very final stage of the ritual. You say your intention out loud one last final time and you thank your angels and and your guides and the universe or the divine or whoever it is that you're working with you thank them for bringing this blessing into your life and then you end it with a power word for some of you guys it's so mote it be or so shall it be or ashe or so it is there's so many different power words that are out there but pick the one that resonates with you the most and when you close the lid onto the candle and seal it the candle will go out all by itself it's like putting a stamp on a letter or finalizing a contractual agreement that you've made with the universe and then the ritual is done. Now I get a lot of questions as far as how it, how long it will take to manifest whatever your intention is. And that truly depends. It doesn't depend on what it is that you're asking for. So, so many of you guys will be like, well, this thing seems so impossible. You know, $100,000 or my soulmate or my twin flame or my life partner or self-love. It seems so impossible for me to attain, so it must take longer. The thing is, is that it's all about your energy. It's all about what you're ready for and what the universe is, you know, prepared to give you. A lot of magic is internal and there's changes that happen within you that you will see and you will feel after you do your ritual. And the changes that you make internally will impact what happens or in the external world and your ability to attract that, your ability to receive it. So when it comes to timing, 
I honestly just feel like the more open you are and the more ready and prepared you are, the faster that thing will come in. It's not a matter of how big it seems to you. So some people will say to themselves, well, I'm going to manifest a quarter when it comes to money or I'm gonna manifest a date because when it comes to love, even though you want this bigger thing, just because you're asking for a little less than what it is that you actually want for yourself, a little less than what it is that you deserve, doesn't mean that that's going to make it happen faster. What makes it happen faster, if it was to happen faster, is the fact that you actually believe that it can happen. That is the only thing that is the actual change, the only difference. That's why I really feel like when you set intentions, you have to pay attention to your feelings. If it feels impossible to you, it will be impossible to manifest or it will take longer. Let's say if you, you know that it's something that you can receive and it's something that you're ready to receive, then this could happen literally overnight. In fact, one of the last times I worked with um, the Candle Magic Dars recently, within 24 hours, I'm not kidding, it manifested. And this person, this thing literally was like chasing me down the street after I worked my ritual jar. And then also, let's go back to the example that it is that I used for my friend where they asked for specifically 100K. They wrote it down. All I asked them to do was write it down in their own handwriting and to just visualize it and think about it and let me do the rest. Basically, it was me taking it back to my altar and just putting it in a jar and setting intention and putting prayer, working around it again, burning the candle down, watching the flame and documenting it. I could see how fast this thing was going to be able to come into their life. And literally, within two weeks, 100K manifested in their life in the job of their dreams. So it's totally up to what it is that you believe, what you are ready to attract into your life, what you are openly preparing your life for, and also you giving energy the divine, the universe, your ancestors, your guides, the space to do what it is that they're going to do on your behalf. Especially if it's something that when you're writing the intention that you feel like it feels good to you, it feels like a blessing, it is a blessing. It's a good thing. If there are feelings within you that are like, no, this is wrong, no, I shouldn't be asking for this, no, this isn't right for me, no, this is what I actually want, then the universe, that's what you're putting in that jar, that's the intention that you're putting out there and you shouldn't be asking, asking for it regardless because your internal guides, your intuition is guiding you not to ask for those things. Don't force your magic, okay? Follow your vibes. That's why my life is so blessed. Truly, because I don't ask for things that I don't actually want, and I'm not afraid to call out for more for myself, and when the universe or when God guides me and says no, that that's not the right thing for you, I respect it, and then I ask them, okay, well, what is it that you see for me? And then when it resonates, when it feels right, that's what I call out. That's why my life is blessed with major, major blessings within my entire life. Every step of the way has been through intention, through working um, my ritual and letting spirit do what it is that it does without having to force it. And people would look and say, well, Jess, you know, these are some major blessings that it is that you've manifested. Like, look at your entire life from your apartments to the book, to your relationship, to your career, to the jobs, to your YouTube channel to all of these things are major things that you've manifested or pulling you know people close to you like one time I've had someone be overseas and I was just like I want to develop my relationship with them like I want to build that relationship with them and within literally within three weeks they decided within their mind that they were going to come to the United States for two I think it was two or three years and they got the job opportunity of a lifetime. They were so excited to come to the United States and we had the opportunity to build our relationship. And this is within my family. So these jars, they work. It seems like it's impossible, but it's not impossible. It's if it feels right. And the, if you're asking from a good place with good intention, the universe is going to give it to you. It's, it's going to serve you. It's going to bless you in that way because you're not asking for anything evil or wrong, okay? So that's how you would work that candle magic jar. Now, again, this was specifically for love, but you can use that for peace, you can use that for money, you can use that to remove something out of your life, but it's all pretty much the same way. Now, let's say you are trying to remove something out of your life, then going back to the piece of paper when it sets your intention, you would fold it the opposite way. You're pushing it away from you. And let's say you're working with, um, you know, removing or hexing something, meaning like you're canceling out of, out of your life. Hexing something isn't necessarily a bad thing. Some of you guys are hexing bad lifestyles. Some of you guys are removing negative people and negative mindset, n negative mindsets out of your life. So it's not a negative thing for you to, you know, push that away. And I do have an oil in my shop that is specifically for that purpose of removing and canceling out out bad energy or things that you don't want 
to share in your space anymore. You don't want them to be a factor in your life. So what you would do is you would use that oil and then you would take the tip and then you pull it away from you because these are the things that it is that you're you know getting rid of now I don't want to use this candle as an example because like I said I'm gonna using be using this candle for ritual later on tonight because it is my solar return and there are some beautiful blessings that is I want to manifest as I'm entering to this next cycle of my life okay now move, speaking of moving forward and moving on with our lives let's move on to the second way that you can use a candle magic jar and one of my second favorite way is to use a candle magic jar. And for this, you're going to need a plate. Now, I happen to have one. Let me go grab it and I'll be right back. Okay, so you can use a plate, which I like to do because I like to give the candle room to spread. Or you can use the jar, the lid of the candle jar. Basically, what method number two is, is for divination. It's for really the times where you really want to pay attention to how something is going to manifest and how that energy is going to unfold and what spirit or what your guides are open to telling you when it comes to this thing manifesting or this answer in your life or what's going on those types of things okay and basically this second ritual is all about watching how the candle wax falls giving it the space to fall and to drip noting those changes and watching where the candle wax will gravitate towards is it pulling towards the bottom is it pulling to the top is it going to the left is it going to the right is it going in the north west direction i really had to think about that for a second <laughs> is it going in the southeast direction where is it that the candle wax is being pulled to because are these are things that are going to show you how that intention is going to manifest or the energy around the intention the energy around that thing that is that you're asking for or asking about now let's say you're working this for money so you would do the same thing that you did with the first jar and you write down your intentions on a piece of paper for the things that it is that you want to manifest. Now me personally, I don't like to use the lid so I'm going to go ahead and put this on the side. What I like to do is I like to write my intentions on a piece of paper and fold it. Fold it three times but fold it so that it's fat. Now let me show you with another paper example. I'll be right back. So let's say this piece of paper holds all of our, or my intentions, which it doesn't. This is from the apothecary and it has some candle jar orders, right? So let's say I wrote down what it is that I see for myself and what it is that I want for my business or maybe my YouTube channel, like growth or whatever. And after I'm done thinking and feeling out what it is that I want for myself and writing it down in full detail and connecting with my emotion and, and getting all of those thoughts and those feelings out in detail specifically on the piece of paper you're gonna fold it one time towards you another time so the fat the fat part way for you and then another time and you want to make sure that the edges are really tight now I have to flip this over because I want to protect my clients. Um, their names are on that piece of paper, right? Because YouTube pays so many of us, If hopefully if you linked up your YouTube channel right, it doesn't pay a whole lot, but it does provide. Um, this jars, herbs, and intention that are added to this jar that I specifically chose that I've had had consistent success with is there to, to attract security into your life, to attract good atten attention, to attract um, stability and abundance in the form of physical, tangible coins manifestation. So that could be money, that could be an increase in your paycheck, a promotion. It could be clients coming to you for your business or your brand. It could be YouTube. You can use it for so many different things. People have even used this to attract in to their lives apartments and houses and I don't do a good enough job sharing the end results of people working with these jars but I'm working on it. I'm still a humble Virgo so it's really hard for me to you know kind of claim you know promote myself not promote but share what they've done um, but I'm really grateful for those of you guys that have shared your results with those candle magic jars and just keep encouraging me to share how people have worked this and maybe one day I'll be a little better at it maybe that should be my candle magic jar tonight ritual tonight is just kind of like 
when it comes to love and you know money money just entering into a space where I'm more comfortable with sharing the testimonials but it is what it is we're focusing on us right now we're focusing on this so let's say you have your intention you have your petition written here for the things that it is that you want to manifest and then you have your candle so I choose gold I chose gold for a reason I personally don't like working with green candles when it comes to manifesting abundance in my life I've noticed that when people work with green candles work ritual with green candles when it comes to manifesting the money that they call in and the money that they attract it's very short it's very temporary maybe they'll get like a twenty thousand dollar paycheck or a ten thousand paycheck um, ten thousand dollar check I've done this before I've done this multiple times where I'm negotiating contracts or I'm like I want ten thousand dollars and then I would work a candle magic jar starting in college <clears throat> one specific example is I wanted ten thousand specifically I was working with the law of attraction I was really challenging my magic and challenging these ritual and challenging intention and challenging the herbs and magic as a whole so I wrote down I wanted ten thousand dollars and I think within two weeks maybe a little less than that I got a phone I got an email first it was an email um, twice and then it was a phone call from the financial aid office saying hey Jess we messed up your student loans and you have a check here for nine thousand nine hundred and ninety five you know dollars or something like that and I was like well look at that it wasn't exactly ten thousand but it was really really close to it and I was just like wow there's some real serious you know magic and power behind what it is that I'm doing and how it was that I was doing it so um, and the same method that I use then is what I'm doing now and what I'm sharing with you guys so if it works for me and I've built my entire life based upon this but and cr have all these blessings in my life then you will too and it's not just me it's my family it's my friends and my clients so anyways so yeah you have your petition you have your intentions written here um, you can use an oil to anoint the candle the same way. I have a money oil available in my shop. And basically you do the same thing that we did with the love jar, which is you take the oil from the base to the tip and pull it towards you, pull it towards you, pull it towards you three times, a total of three times. Let's say there's a specific number that it is that you want to manifest or there's a word that reminds you of what it is that you're trying to manifest. So maybe it's a mantra or something. So maybe it's like abundance or maybe it's security or maybe it's the name of your company surrounded by dollar signs, whatever it is. So you can carve that into the side of the candle. I, I usually don't do that because all of my intentions are written on the petition paper underneath it. You can then use the herbs to push onto the candle. Some people like to do that. That's not something that I always do, but I've seen others like to do that. I've Of course, I've done it before in the past but I'll show you my method for how I work with the herbs when it comes to anointing the candle and working the candle magic but what I will do is melt the base of the candle with the with another candle flame and the reason for this is to keep it upright because if you don't burn the base of the flame the candle has a strong chance of falling over so this is more for practical reasons than it is for anything else okay so it's standing upright and then this is when I take the herbs and let's say I'm drawing in security into my life then I sprinkle the herbs within the jar around the base of the candle in a clockwise motion because these are things that is that we're attracting into our lives or these are things that we want to attract into our lives what you want to do is you want to make sure that there's a ring around the around the candle and there's space clear around the base of the candle. So I don't know if you can see that, but there's a white space between that and that's there for a reason. That's there to watch how the candle wax drips and what and pay attention to what direction it's moving towards. And you want to make sure that you're getting all of the herbs that are in these jars. So at the very base of this, because some of these herbs have a tendency to fall to the bottom. So you want to sprinkle all of that in a clockwise motion around the base of the candle. And keep it clear. Okay. 
Then it's time for you to light the top of the candle, signaling the start of this candle magic process. And you're gonna watch the flame just as we did with the Love Candle Magic Jar. You're gonna do the same thing that we did with this one, which is watch the flame, watch the candle wax, and give it the space to melt down as it should, the way that it should. Now there's a few things that you want to look out for. You wanna look to see if the candle caves in. Do you, you wanna see if the candle opens up and blossoms out. You wanna watch what direction the candle wax is flowing towards. Again, is it flowing to the bottom of, or the base of the plate? Is it going to the top, the left, the right, this corner, that corner? You wanna watch to see if there's little curls to the candle, if the curl if the candle kind of flicks up, if it makes a cage, like if it makes these like interlocking type of webs. All of these things are things to pay attention to because they tell you a lot about the energy of what it is that you're trying to manifest and, the ener and your intention. Especially if you're working with partnerships or growth or business, it will tell you the energy of that relationship or the obstacles. And as those obstacles present themselves, it's going to cue you into what you need to set additional intention, what you need to work additional magic for in order to remove them and release them to help clear the path. Now, at that point, if you do see um, certain challenges, you can call out to um, angels like the Archangel Michael or your ancestors or your guides to help remove and cancel out those blockages to help this blessing come into your life. Us talking about candle wax and how the can what direction the candle wax flows into and how it unfolds and how it burns down is a whole nother video all by itself. So if you guys would like to see a video about that, please let me know down in the comments and I'm, I'll be more than happy to talk to you about it. Let me just finish talking about this for now. So once the candle burns all the way down to the base and it's actually gonna burn all the way down to the base, you are then going to take all of the herbs, push them together, and let's pretend like this candle isn't here. Let's say, let's pretend like it's already burned down. You're gonna fold them, you're gonna pour it back into the jar, including the intention. The candle wax included as much as you can it's not possible to get all of the herbs in there but it is what it is and you are going to seal it and place it somewhere safe and protected and the ritual is done all right my loves so that is how you will work the candle magic jars again this is something that you can do for yourself this method is very unique to me and my process. If you want a specific candle jar made for you, there are many available in my shop now. The links for that will be down below. Also, if you need a specific candle magic jar made for your specific intentions, or if you feel like you have a special occasion or a special situation, then feel free to go ahead and email me. All of my information for that is down below. Now, let me explain to you guys the difference between these jars, why I would work with these jars versus why I would work with one of these. Let me move this plate and then I will explain it in just a second. So I love these types of candles. You can still fix them. Of course, people do that all the time. But the one th limitation with this is that you can't observe the candle wax. You can't watch how the candle wax will burn. The only thing that you can watch is the flame and smoke and also if there's any soot at the top of the jar as the candle burns down. With these types of candles, as the candle wax burns down, the wax literally evaporates. So you can't see in detail how the intention is truly gonna manifest. And I also feel like when this jar is done, some people hold on to it, but a lot of people get rid of it. And for me, to have these jars when holding the intention, holding the paper, holding all of these aspects and elements that help to manifest this dream that you have, this intention into a reality, all of those things are, are like, I don't wanna say souvenirs, but they're, they're like little power tokens that you can keep within your sacred space, within your home environment, within your relationship as a symbol of and a holder of the magic that you've manifested or this intention that you set that special night, that special day. And it just doesn't stop with the candle burning down. For example, for example, let me show you this pot, right? This plant seems like a, a normal everyday plant but within it is actually a candle jar. And every time I water this plant, I'm giving this energy life. But as this plant is 
thriving and as this plant is growing, it's doing this all around the intention that is within within this pot. And as an earth child and as an earth witch, I love working with the element of earth, fire, water, and spirit, and air. All of those elements come together within this jar in order to create some really powerful changes. And to hold them in a space where it's like continuing to thrive, it's con con continuing to being nourished, that energy is being supported and held in such a safe and sacred space. That's why this is how I work by magic. This is why this is so important and special to me. The sacredness of my ritual doesn't stop with the moment that I'm working at my altar. It continues on afterwards. Even if you decide not to put your jar in a plant or a potted plant, let's say you decide to use it to protect and bless your marriage, just putting one of these jars with your intention to protect your marriage behind a photo of the couple on the fireplace, you know, just kind of tucked behind there, no one would know that it's back there. Like people don't move a picture of the couple, you know, on a fireplace and be like, okay, what's behind this? Most people don't touch that picture frame. They just kind of leave it alone. But that energy is there protecting the couple and it's held in such a sacred space with the intention of protecting that relationship and, and protecting that bond and strengthening that bond and the intimacy between both of those partners. That is something that is so special and unique to these jars that you can't find with a, a candle like this. Now, all that being said, I will fix one of these candles for myself or my clients using the same herbs, the same oils that it is I used from my apothecary. And I will add it on my altar almost as an offering or as a blessing. So I don't watch the flame as much, although you can, and I have in the past, but I pretty much let it burn down and I monitor how long it takes for the candle to burn all the way to the base. But mostly how I use these candles is for protection or a blessing. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but while I'm doing readings on my channel, I will always have a black candle like this burning. That's because that candle is fixed and has the intention to protect me and to protect my business as I'm making myself so public. So the candle is fixed for protection and I allow it to burn down as it will. So I'm not going to say that one is better than the other. I can say that I use them for different reasons and they're powerful in their own different way. And the other thing is that when you're working with these candles is that you can really, for the most part, I don't recommend it, but I've, I've left these candles burning all by themselves. And it's more about kind of walking away from the intention and allowing it to do what it is that it's going to do. It doesn't really need you to observe it as much, although you can if you want to. Sorry, there's a little herb in here that I wanted to get out. You can do that, but I will work with these candles. They're, they just seem more independent. I've always used these candles in a way that it just they independently do their own thing, but again, to each their own. That's just my, this is just my method. These are my beliefs. This is how I work it, okay? So thank you guys so much for tuning in. I really appreciate your comments and you being you know, open to listening. I know for some of you guys, talking about candle magic is a little controversial, but I've always been a person who works with love and light and I've never had any backlash come to me. Why would it? Because my intention is always good. And the things that I'm calling out to the universe have always been, or to the divine, to God, have always been things that, you know, God was working to give me anyways. I feel like these are all a part of our different paths in lives. There's different paths that bring you to God and help you to work with God. This just happens to be mine. So before I get attacked by some people, because they have a tendency to do that sometimes on the in the YouTube world, before you get attacked, I want to invite you guys to keep an open mind. And for those of you guys who are working your magic, be very confident within yourself. Know that the desires within your heart are things that were given to you by God. They're written also within your astrology chart and helping to guide you to even call out and ask them for it and when you work with candle and when you work with your heart and when you work with earth and you work with all these elements and spirit in order to help to manifest them these are things that are already written in the stars and in your heart embedded in your heart for you to ask for you're just helping them to come in you're helping you're helping yourself to prepare by working energy to help you to become prepared to receive that blessing within your life okay so happy magic setting happy intention setting don't limit yourself and what can happen because truly the sky is the limit all right you guys so thank you so much for watching I want to invite you to subscribe because there's plenty more videos where this came from. Go ahead and give this video a thumbs up because it does make a difference to me. Feel free to ask any additional questions that you have down in the comments. Yes, I do read them all and I try to respond as many as possible. But you guys know I'm a busy girl. I'm always working these candle magic jars for you, prepping them, preparing them for you, as well as the oils. So I stay pretty busy working for, you know, stocking the shop, keeping the shop 
um, filled so that you can work your magic and also working one-on-one -on -one with my clients. If you are interested in that, the links for everything is down below and I'm more than happy to work with you or to provide for you, okay? So thank you again for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!